So we're starting, though, with the celebration now turned controversy that's making headlines. The road to motherhood for rapper DeBrat and her wife, beauty entrepreneur Jessica Harris DuPart, who goes by the name Judy. They've been on the show. In fact, this was a picture of DeBrat rocking it last Saturday, doing what she does. That's the baby bump. Um, you know, she is seven months pregnant, the baby, you know, bursting out of that bull's jersey. Um, and there she was, huge crowd, Usher's uh, Lovers and Friends Festival, that was in Vegas. Um, you would never know it, though, from that image of her confidence that last week, the Brad and Judy, they really ignited a heated online debate about race and fertility. Um, it was here, actually, on this show, in this seat, exclusively over a year ago. They told us about their marriage, about their hopes and dreams for a baby. And as a same-sex couple, they did what almost 450,000 hopeful parents do every year in this country. They sought out a sperm donor. But it was uh, when they really revealed that the donor was actually white. Um, it set off a series of comments with people saying things like they had the money and the means to find a suitable black donor if that's what they truly wanted. Devastated by some of those comments, Judy, already a mother of three children, by the way, three black children, took to Instagram to respond. It's early in the morning, but you know what? I see all of the headlines. In the first episode, the first episode of Brad Loves Judy, we are in search of black donors. So a question was asked around that because you saw in real time us trying to find a black donor and you saw the difficulties. There are difficulties. There's a lot of facts in the world that people, I feel like, really don't know or are ignorant to. And that's that black men make up 5% or less of the sperm donation pool. Then even with that, once you put in your genetic testing, you'll be lucky to find one, if any. I'm a carrier of four different things, four. If we chose somebody that had the same thing, our child would most likely have it, and they're severe. Well, today, DeBrat and Judy are here with the Tan fam. I invited them to come on to talk about what the story is behind the headlines. It's a very personal, daytime exclusive interview. I think it's an important conversation, and I always think it's fair. It's right to be fair to people. Please welcome for the first ever interview together after the headlines, the Brat and Judy. Yeah. Hey, Mama. How are you feeling? Fine. How are you? Good. Yeah. Hey, beautiful. How are you? Yeah. Oh, have a seat. Oh, oh. Right. Yeah, I'm good. Uh, you gotta love that the brat is pregnant, but she helped Judy up the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was expecting you to come out with your half top. No. You're a little more demure today. <laughs> How are you feeling? I feel good. I'm sleepy a lot. <laughs> I sleep all the time, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm short of breath. You're short of breath? Yeah. I know that um, you did an interview. Uh, with People Magazine right after you announced that you'd conceived and it was successful. And you said something to the effect of you never thought motherhood was in the cards for you. Yeah, I didn't. I, I think because I didn't get pregnant in my younger years that it just wasn't in the cards for me. You know, when you're young, you're not supposed to get pregnant. <laughs> Those times when you're, like, messing around and stuff, you're like, oh, my God, I'm going to get kicked out the house. And you pray for your cycle to come. Uh... <laughs> 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 you know, but because that never happened, I just felt like it wasn't. In <laughs> listen, there's a lot of listen. There's a lot of confessing in here. This is not church. Hold it for next week. We we all understand. But but you you so here you are, and Mother's Day is around the corner. It's your pre Mother's Day. Yeah, that's crazy yeah. to me. Yeah, at 49. At 49. Yeah. 49. <laughs> Um, Judy, yeah, so I, I, when I saw the headline, um, the brat and Judy under attack for white sperm, do it was a series of them. I instantly called the team and I said, I want them on because it's not fair. It is not fair. 
because there are facts behind it, um, which you tried to reveal. So let's just get to the heart of it. So you decide you're going to be parents. I know that you'd gone through a lot of surgery, fibroids. You weren't sure. Miscarriage. This has been a journey. Mm -hmm. A journey. Backtrack before it all, the egg retrieval. Did you know much about sperm donation? No. No. We, we actually thought we was going into it and, you know, just... That would hey, be the easy go. part because yeah. there's so many donors. Because you see stories every day. One man, 500 children, right? So right. You <laughs> So we never thought that that would be an issue at all, so we never worried about it. We were more worried about the, the whole IVF process right. where she had to get shots in her stomach in the beginning and take all these hormonal medicines, and then I had to give myself shots, and she had to give me shots, and then she ended up in the hospital with blood clots in her lungs once they retrieved their eggs. Then she had an enlarged heart. It's just on and on, like, constant things. And then I ended up having a miscarriage, and I had polyps in my uterus. It was just so many different things, but we thought when we got to the donor part, it would be a breeze. It would be easy. Yeah, there were thousands. <laughs> when you went in to have that meeting um, to talk about the sperm donor, let me first start, did you ever consider a family member or is that even something you can do? We, we felt like we wanted it to be somebody anonymous. Okay. We didn't want anybody to ever come back and be able to say, hey, I'm you know, a parent right. or I'm, I'm your father or anything. Especially like when you're dealing wanted. with a celebrity. Right. right. Yeah. And I understand that. So you go to the sperm bank, right? Mm -hmm. I'm assuming. Three different three, reputable ones. Three yeah. different, rep hopefully reputable. Yeah, for You're the brat. You can't be walking <laughs> in anywhere. You go in and do they show you photos of individuals? Yes, they do. Yeah, so we were doing, we were just looking and we was like, oh, they, they seem to have a nice bit. Yes. But then, you know, with the genetic testing, you then put in your... I, I'm a carrier of four different disorders. So yeah. then you put in the disorders and then it, it eliminates it down to from thousands to 13. So you go in, do you say to them, what do you say? I want a black man who's tall. I mean, do you give specifics about the... No, it was person? online. Yeah, oh, it's, so it's all online. Yeah, it's all it's, online. It's like shopping. It's like online it's, shopping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were... <laughs> we were scrolling. Okay. We were scrolling. <laughs> Okay, so, Judy, I, I love how you describe So we're on Sperm Mart. <laughs> we're at Sperm Mart, and we're going it's through... Like, look at our, oh, are they, so so on, on, the, on the website or whatever, you see the picture and you see the description of the person. Yes. As you are scrolling, are you noticing... Wow, there are not a lot of... No, when we were first, first scrolling, there was a lot of some of everybody. Yeah. There was a lot of black people, a lot of... But once she put in her genetic testing results, ah. which is like uh, four different carriers, she doesn't have these diseases, right. but they run in her right. bloodline. She's right. a carrier of them. Mm -hmm. So those cannot match with the donor. Gotcha. They have to be negative. So they now you shrink negative. down to thousands to... Hundreds. Well, so it went from thousands to a few hundred, right. and then when we put in uh, black, there was one, but then there was none, because it was a black guy, but then it was it, his profile wasn't that deep. So here's what happens next, right in the story, and this is part of why we're gonna we're gonna go to this part. Okay. Um, on the show, on your show, mm -hmm. you have a reaction to the photo of or the image of this one black donor. Let me play, let me play the clip from the show. Let's play. Hey Dr. A. Good morning. How are you? Hey. We, we we doing okay. We, but we looking through the, the cryobank thing um, from the ones you gave us, but we don't see no black people. Yeah, that's a problem. Then it went from thousands of donors down to 224 donors. Uh, and about and one of them is black. Right, so this is an important issue, unfortunately. There are just not enough black donors. Black sperm donors, black egg donors. So, unfortunately, the pool is, is limited for so a lot our baby of black daddy. Issues. Our baby daddy can't be black? Well, the thing is, not Yeah, if he looks like Jiminy Cricket. <laughs> The thing the is, one or two funny. black people I saw, that thing is not, that thing ain't finna be looking like my child. So, <laughs> some people in our audience are laughing, some kind of don't know how to take it. That line saying that the black donor looked like Jiminy Cricket mm -hmm. set off. No, people were oh furious. Yes. Yeah. And there were very hateful things yeah. written. <laughs> 
I've known you. You you first was, talked to me about coming out. I know your sense of humor. I know you grew up in the church. You use humor to deflect. You've used humor to deflect from your sexuality, from your journey. That's I got the joke. Yeah. As painful as it was for some people to hear this. Why didn't you cut that out of the show? I, I didn't think it would be offensive to anybody. I cracked jokes about almost everybody that I saw. That one just happened to make it in the show. I wasn't trying to be uh, mean or like say anything negative about black people. We were looking for a black donor. That We're black, we wanted a black donor. So uh, it, it was just misconstrued and taken way out of context. Like I, I talked about quite a few people as we joked looking for donors, but that's the one that made it. And I guess they thought it was funny. And it, I didn't think it would bother anybody or else I would have taken it out. I had no idea people were gonna be so offended, but I meant no harm whatsoever. I, we wanted a black donor. Like, it just, I was just like, what? People take things and run with it. And it, it, it's, I'm like, what? People who know me know that I didn't mean any harm. So if I offended anybody, I do apologize. But it, it, it was a joke between me and my wife and the doctor. Like, we joke like that. We play around. So it wasn't meant to be offensive in any way. You know, when I knew it was real and it was impacting you, first of all, you're carrying a child and you don't need this kind of stress in your life. Mm -hmm. You have all these complications. But when I knew it was real and I wanted to call you, when you posted that Instagram, every time I see Judy, she is perfection. She's a beauty mogul. You had laid bare. There was no makeup. There was the hair. And I said, this is getting to her. Mm -hmm. Because you went on social media, just your bare, vulnerable self. And you said, it was just a silly, she has this kind of sense of humor. Yeah. But the attacks and, and the hostility. Yeah, so I'm more on social than she is. And there were things that I was really trying to avoid her from seeing. They had comments that said, I just hope you guys miscarry. And I didn't want her. I, I think I was more affected because I know she, I, I know she, you know, she's a, you know, it don't matter, I don't care, I don't care, but it was a lot of stuff that I'm, I'm sitting, and then I'm, I'm in Bentonville, I have a meeting at Walmart, I'm in the Walmart meeting trying to delete all these different comments because we shared a post, and I know if they're coming on my page, they're coming on her page, so I'm trying to delete a lot of stuff so she can't see it on my page and she can't see it on her page because it was extreme hate, and I feel like, I'm, I'm kind of used to some of it, you know, from being on social media, but when it comes to our child, something that we work really, really hard for, I Ooh. was in a hospital, like, something we work really, really hard for, I felt like, oh my God, if nothing else at this time, I feel like this should be at least an educational moment so our people aren't as ignorant so other different women don't have that situation.